electrostatics. So in electrostatics, the main formulas that we use, it's actually a very easy section. The main formulas that we use, I, I should have put there the formulas here, but it's usually F equals to K Q one Q two over R squared E equals to K Q over R squared E equals to F over small q. Um, and then there's even this formula where you can work out the number of electrons. Um, you'll hardly ever use it, but I think in today's question, I just see there there's an electron. Um, so that's usually going to be given as, oh, I always forget exactly, um, it's like a capital Q. We hardly ever use this formula. We use it a lot in grade 10, but for grade 12, we don't really use it much, but it goes something like that. Okay. All of those are given to you on the formula sheet. So that's quite nice. Um, and then we also need to remember our conversions. You know, when they give you like a milli or a micro, nano, pico, you need to remember all of these little conversions. Um, sorry, I've, I haven't written this very neatly. It looks confusing. Times 10 to the minus three, times 10 to the minus six times. Oh, Kevin, you got three little times is there. And then K, of course, is a constant of nine times 10 to the nine. Okay, that's pretty much the summary of the different formulas that we use. And please remember that in, in, in these formulas over here, you never put the negative. Do not use a negative. Do not use a negative. Okay, um, right, so let's start, guys. So let's see what this question is all about. So they tell us that we have two spheres, A and B, are placed in insulated stands, blah, 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 blah. They carry charges. Okay, so everything that they've told us is on the diagram. Calculate the number of electrons in excess on sphere A. Now, I'll be honest. I know that some of you read that and you think, what? I don't even understand what that means. It, it sounds easy, but I don't really understand what they're talking about. I know. So let me explain it. We know that we have, if you have a sphere, if you have a sphere, that sphere is combined with three main things, protons, electrons, and neutrons. Now, the, I know this is basic to some of you, but I know that for, for others, it can be quite helpful. So if your protons, if your protons equals your electrons, if there's the same amount, then it is neutral, okay? If protons are more, actually some of you don't like that symbol, more than neutron, I mean electrons, then, the, then it will be more positive. Then sphere is positive, okay? And then let's just do one more. If new electrons, I mean, if protons less, then electrons, then sphere is negative. Bam, simple as that. So what we know is that um, we know that calculate the number of electrons in excess on sphere A. So we can see that this thing has a negative charge. So that means that it's because it's got more electrons or the protons are less than the electrons. So they wanna know how many extra electrons does it have? And so that's going to be using this formula over here, which we some of us haven't used since grade 10. I know um, yeah, the chances you get something like this is very small, but it can happen. So the number of electrons, which is that that's what that stands for, number of electrons, is equal to the charge, which would be negative 4 times 10 to the negative 6. Sorry, you don't use the negatives on these formulas either. And then the charge of an electron, the charge of an electron is negative 1.6, but don't put the negative. So you just say 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. That is the charge of an electron and it will always be given to you in the exam. You know, at the beginning of an exam, or at the beginning of the formula sheet, there's always that table. It will be given to you over there. And so if we had to go calculate this now, we would find out that the excess electrons will be two, 
2.5 times 10 to the 13 electrons. Okay, that's a big number. That is a lot of electrons. So that's that question complete. Then it says, calculate the magnitude of the electrostatic force exerted by sphere A on sphere B. Now, some students read that and they're like, okay, sphere A on sphere B. How do I do that? Is it, guys, it doesn't matter if they say A on B or B on A because it's actually the same thing, according to my good old friend, Newton. Newton, third law, says that when an object exerts a force on another object, then they will, then that object will exert the same force back. So A on B is the same as B on A. They're just trying to mess with your head over here. It's the same thing. So what we do is we use the formula F equals to K Q1 Q2 over R squared. And then K we know is nine times 10 to the nine. Q1, you can choose whichever one you like. I'm going to take that one over there. We don't need to use any conversion because they have already given it to us in Coulomb. Remember that you don't put the negative on the calculator. I mean, on the on, in the formula or on the calculator. And then this one will be 3 times 10 to the negative 6. The distance must always be measured in meters. And so many students forget about the square. I've seen that a lot. Don't forget the square. And now if we go work that out, that's going to give us 2.7 Newtons. OK, but now we can give a direction. Calculate the mag. Oh, no, they just said magnitude. Whenever they say magnitude, it actually means that you do not. You do not need to give direction. Yeah, whenever they say magnitude, you don't need to give the direction as well. But we do know, just out of your own, in, for your own interest, these two spheres, they would attract each other because they are negative and positive. So they're oppositely charged. So they will attract each other. So A would want to go to the right and B would want to go to the left. All right, 7.4. Calculate the magnitude of the electric field at point M. Okay, very, very, very easy question. Um, all you do, can you see that they are asking us for the electric field? So it's gonna be one of these formulas over here because they have an E in them. So we're gonna use one of those. Um, another thing is that point M, can you see that it doesn't have a positive or a negative? Now that's a bit of a problem because we need to know whether it's positive or negative. Otherwise, we won't know if B is maybe going to push it right or left. And we're also not going to know what will A do to it, push it right or left. So your teacher has probably mentioned this to you last year and this year, that when you are doing electric field calculations and they don't give you the charge of this random little point over here, you must always assume that it is positive, always. Even if you go read the definition of electric field in your handbook or textbook, sorry, um, it would say it is the force experienced per unit positive test charge. Okay, so what we do now, guys, is it's very easy. You're going to take A, for example, and you're going to see what is A doing to M. Then you're going to take B and you're going to see what is B doing to M. A lot of students ask me, um, Kevin, shouldn't we look at what A is doing to B? Not at all, guys. We do not care what A and B are doing to each other. This question is all about M. So what we can do now is we can go calculate the electric field of, um, of A on M. And we are going to use this formula over here. That is the formula you use in these types of scenarios. And so that's going to give you 9 times 10 to the 9. Don't put the negative on the calculator. And then the distance will just be 0, 0,3. Can you see that? It's 0, 0,3 meters. And then you get your answer. What, well, the reason I like to do electric field, these types of questions that we're doing right now, is the numbers that we get in the answer are usually quite nice. Ah, oh, there we go. So satisfying. 400,000. And then the, the units of electric field strength is n dot c minus one. Now we can give a direction. So if you look at A, it is negative. If you look at M, it is positive. So they will attract each other. 
So A is going to move to the right and M is going to move to the left. But we don't care about A. We do not care what's happening to A because this question is all about M. So M is going to move left. We're going to say left over there. If A wants to move right, that's cool, but we don't really care about that. Um, OK, so now we're going to look at the force of, of um, the electric field of B on M. And so it's going to be the same formula. Uh, 3 times 10 to the minus 6. The distance, 0 0.1. Please don't forget your squares. OK, big number. Two, seven, uh, one, two, th one, two, three, four, five. N dot C minus one. Okay, now B is positive, M is positive. So B and M are gonna push each other away. So B is gonna be pushed to the left, M is gonna be pushed to the right. So we don't care about B, so we're gonna say to the right. So now what happens is that you've got a trying to make M go left, and you've got B trying to make M go to the right. So if we had to do a free body diagram on M, we would see that there is a, there's the electric field of B on M pushing it to the right, and then there's a smaller force or electric field of A. And so if we want to work out the net, I'm going to choose to the right as positive. So then I'm just going to say the electric field of B minus the electric field of A. And so that's just going to give us, um, what's that, 2.7 million, 700,000, yes, 2.7 million, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 400,000. And that should give us 2.3, but let me just make sure. Two three zero 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 one two three four five n dot c to the right. Okay, don't put the exclamation mark. We're not trying to shout at anyone here. <laughs> Just to the right. 